Hey guys, real fast before this video gets started, I just wanna let you know, I held this video off. I recorded this about 24 hours before the news broke about Mr. Mior's death. And I didn't want to be one of those channels who tried to capitalize off that. So it was really just a more of a tragic coincidence that I started reading this uh, this, this manga at the time that I did. Uh, it was never anything that I, I had planned to do based off of anything like that. But I also kind of want to let you guys know that is that's why I don't bring up his passing in this video. Because at the time, none of us knew. Depending on how this video does, and if I do continue to cover Berserk on the channel, I will be going more into uh, Kintaro Miura's legacy a bit as I talk about some of these very famous arcs and things like that. So I just want to let you know up front, that's why I don't speak upon his passing when I did it, because at the time, uh, he was still with us. So I uh, hope you guys understand, and I hope to talk to you about Berserk more in the future. Enjoy. You know, for years now, I've had friends be like, Mike, what is it going to take for you to actually, finally give manga a try? And I would always tell them, guys, look, it's going to be like this. It's going to have to get to the point to where American comics are just at such a low point that they are unreadable. Well, I'm about 10 years late for that. But let's go ahead and take a brief look at Berserk by Kentaro Miura. In this world, is the destiny of mankind controlled by some transcendental entity or law? Is it like the hand of God hovering above? Man takes up sword in order to shield the small wound in his heart sustained in a far off time beyond remembrance. Man wields the sword so that he may die smiling in some far off time beyond perception. Each man longs to pursue his dream, and each man is tortured by this dream, but the dream gives meaning to his life. Even if the dream ruins his life, man cannot allow himself to leave it behind. In this world, is man ever able to possess anything more solid than a dream? It is my perception that a true friend never relies on another man's dream. A person with the potential to be my true friend must be able to find his reason for life without my help. And he would have to put his heart and soul into protecting his dream. He would never hesitate to fight for his dream, even against me. For me, a true friend is one who stands equal in those terms. Living for the future is more important than trying to avenge the past. And do not forget, when you gaze into the darkness, the darkness gazes back into you. Hate is a place where a man who cannot stand sadness goes. If you desire one thing for so long, it is a given that you'll miss other things along the way. That is how it is. That is life. We are mortal, we are fragile, but even if we are tortured or wounded, we will fight to survive. You should feel the pain we feel and understand. I am the messenger that will deliver you to that pain and understanding. When you meet your God, tell him to leave me alone. Hey, what's up, bookworms and berserkers? Mike back today to talk a little manga for the first time on the channel. And we'll be dipping into 1989's Berserk by Kentaro Miura. Uh, I think this is a series that needs really no introduction from me because I think that this series has been popular since about the time I was old enough to buy my own comics, you know, and I could get away with buying something like this. Uh, I just never really did. But uh, just because I've never read it before now, uh, it doesn't mean that I have not been aware of this. I've been aware of it for quite some time, even before some of the things I'm going to talk about here. But a little bit of background, obviously, if you don't know, this began in 1989 as part of Monthly Animal House magazine. And uh, I, I, I wouldn't say it's been on my radar. But uh, look, full disclosure, guys, I've never read manga ever before this. Okay, I've never... 
it was never anything where I was like, just no way. There's zero chance I'm going to do it. Now, now anime, I, I am kind of like that. I have no interest in that just because I'm, I'm really, it's animation is really tough for me as is. And uh, some of the anime I've watched, I'm like, mm, yeah, not for me. But I have given it a try. It's just not for me. With this, it was never that uh, I was against actually reading it or anything. It's just like, you know, I have enough American comics that I haven't caught up on. You know, wh why am I going to dip into a new culture or stuff like that? But we'll get into why I decided to finally break that rule a little bit more than I uh, kind of talked about there in the intro. But uh, really... Uh, with this, uh, I guess I can just jump right into it, guys, why I decided to read it. Uh, there's lots and lots of reasons that we're going to get into. But before we do, let's kind of do like we do with a review here. Let's talk about what is the series about in case you were like me and you were interested before you get going here. Now, Berserk is a story that centers on the character of Guts, an orphan mercenary, and also Griffith, an enigmatic leader of a mercenary band called the Band of the Hawk. It's about their friendship, the bonding, and enmity. Told through a series of flashbacks, their story explores themes of isolation, camaraderie, and the question of whether humanity is fundamentally good or evil, and it pervades the story as it best explores both the best and worst of human nature. A story not for the squeamish or the easily offended, Berserk asks for no quarter and offers absolutely none. And that takes us, guys, into Berserk by Kentaro Miura. Now... How this is a little different than uh, most of my why you should read stuff is I am not here to tell you why you should read. I'm here to tell you why I'm, I'm decided to read this here. There are a numerous reasons, but I can't think of a bigger one here for why I decided to read it is, look, I've been a comic book fan since I was about four years old, but I've never strayed from American comics because they were always so strong. You know, I was never, you see today, you see the people who fall in love with some movies and they decide, oh, I've got to be a Marvel guy or I've got to be a DC guy. I was never that. I mean, I was a... Batman, Spider-Man, X-Men, Justice League. It didn't matter to me, man. It was all comics. It was all awesome. And then it got really convoluted there for a while. And really, I think with me, it, it, it kind of started to die off there a little bit towards when Jeff Johns was like the only one that I was actually having a good time reading anymore. But the whole time that I was doing this is I was saying... Look, I might not have read any manga, but I know the name Kentaro Miura. I mean, I, that's just, to me, that's like, uh, if you are, just because you're not a manga fan, you don't know who he is. It's like saying, okay, well, you're not a horror fan, but you've heard of Stephen King. I really felt like, okay, yeah, that's like an apt comparison for me. Everyone had heard of Kentaro Miura if they were into the comics industry. They knew who the man was. And I was aware of what Berserk was. I was I always used to see art from it, and I'd just be like, huh kick-ass sword, you know? I mean, what's wrong with a guy with a giant sword, right? So it was never anything that I was never going to read or anything like that. Just It was a, never, a couple of things that, that kind of held me back a little bit. But when I first got interested, really, believe it or not, was 21 years ago. Now, I had a Sega Dreamcast. And at the time, I was working at a video game store, and someone came and they traded in a game called Sword of the Berserk Guts Rage. And I was like, hey, this is that thing with the guy with the big-ass sword. This is awesome. <laughs> and uh, my roommate at the time, who also worked at the store, was like, yeah, that, that's Guts from Berserk, the comic book. And I'm like, oh, whatever. The game looks cool. He was real big. And he was always trying to push anime on me. It never really worked. Uh, it was his fault for trying to show me Lane. I think it was called Lane as my first anime. Big mistake. Anyhow... <laughs> I don't even know if that's what it was actually called, uh, but, uh, but <laughs> good memories there. But uh, yeah, so I played that game and I loved it. I thought the art style was amazing. I thought the character was really kick-ass. The monsters were really creepy. And I was like, is this a really a good representation of the comedy? Because I was like, eh, cool. I'll check it out. But at the time, it was like, okay, they weren't really making these big volumes yet. If they were, I didn't know. I wasn't aware of where to get the, the, these things at the time. I had one American comic book shot I went to the time, and it was just the new releases. It, was any, it wasn't anything like this. They weren't dealing in any manga. So this was like in the year 2000, guys. It may be like humongous now. And you know what? It might have been humongous then. It just wasn't at your local comic book shop because comic book shops pre-X-Men movies were not huge like they are now. So uh, it was a different time, I think. But that, that game first is what really got me into the idea of reading this, but I just never really went out and tried to actively find it and just kind of forgot about it for a while. Now, the number one reason that I'm going to read this series, guys, is because of you. And I want to say it's because, look, when I started this channel, one of the first things I did was I talked about the First Law series by Joe Abercrombie. And I talked about how much I love the subgenre of Grimdark. And almost every video I've made since then, I will have someone say, 
hey, you like grimdark fantasy a lot. Have you read Berserk by Kentaro Miura? And I'm always like, no, I have not read any manga. I have no intentions to, but I will keep it in mind. And that is the number one reason because this has been the most recommended series since I've started this channel. Yes, more than Malazan. Yes, more than Wheel of Time. More than anything I have ever done on this channel, I have gotten more recommendations for Berserk. And it's amazing. So I was like, okay, look, this is obviously not just some, I'm not going to use the W word. I think that's just so rude. It, and I know that some people use it kind of just being funny. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I just, I'm not going to do that because I think it's goofy. That to me was like, you know, calling a comic book reader a dork or, I mean, hello. <laughs> Look where you are, right? But uh, yeah, my, my biggest excuse for this is always uh, I didn't own the series. Well, a viewer decided he was going to fix that. He sent me volume number one. And it's just, I was like, you know what? I could use something like that just in between. Because reading a manga, that, I, that what I've noticed here now, because I've, I've read the first three volumes, guys. I can tell you that. Or almost done with three at where I'm at right now. I'm right before... You start that uh, famous Golden Age arc. That's kind of where I'm at right now. But I'll get into that here in a minute. But um, I noticed that you can read these really quick. Much It seems like American comics for a while have gotten really, really text heavy. And it seems like with this, it's like every other page, you guys, is a splash page. So I was like, I read this first volume in one sitting, you know, the first night. Uh, and then I went and I've gotten a bunch more on my iPad now. Uh, because these were like 15 bucks a pop and I had some digital credits and I decided that they're never going to make new Saga episodes, Brian K. Vaughn. So I finally decided to quit hoarding my Comixology credits and just to go ahead and pick up some Berserk and uh, some other things, which I'll talk about some other time. But uh, the viewer went ahead and sent me that one. I read the whole thing and I realized, hey, you know what? This is something that I can read really fine in between heavy Malazan books and things like that. But what I've really noticed is, yeah, this uh, this uh, parental advisory thing is not exactly for the reasons I expected. Um, look, I am guilty of this. I'm not going to hide it. I am guilty of believing all those stereotypes about manga, about anime, about all that stuff, about, you know, upskirts and tentacle porn and all that kind of stuff. I, I believe that it was all like that. I really did. This is nothing like that. This is straight. I mean, look, there's like a fairy and... There's lots of graphic stuff, but this is like straight body horror, grimdark fantasy coming of age stuff, man. I'm all about this. This is great. I, I love that. But since this is a comic not for the squeamish, not for the easily offended, I don't think I'm going to offend anybody else by talking about my next reason here. And I know that there's some people that will be upset by that, but again, look at what you're watching a video on, guys. Probably one of the most non-PC comics I've ever read, okay? Um... I think that American comics right now are complete trash. They are completely unreadable. Uh, they, the creators these days are so much more interested in getting on social media and fighting with their paying customers over making really great content. Uh, like I said, I feel like since Jeff Johns kind of left the mainstream, I know he still does stuff with, uh, God, what did they do, Rebirth? I think Rebirth was the last thing I read by him. But uh, yeah, I, I think uh, after he finished Flash and Aquaman and Green Lantern, uh, that, that's pretty much around the time where comics got really difficult for me to read in the States. They just they stopped being fun. They were super luxury. Uh, the arts kind of went downhill a little bit, a lot bit. And it just they just aren't fun anymore. I felt like Saga was the last American comic that was worth a shit. And that was on Image imprint. And, uh, and again, that's that's the Song of Ice and Fire comic books, guys. They just they just stopped. They just gave up. It's like, hey, we're right in the middle of it. The peak of a success. Eh, here's a nice, nice three-year break. Why not? You know, so, uh, yeah, it was one of those things where I was like, okay, look, American comics are in the toilet. And their creators don't seem interested in making good content anymore. And from what I've been told... Manga's not doing that. They're still creating kick-ass content. They're not giving a shit about who they upset. They're not preaching to everybody the whole time. And I said, you know what? That sounds cool. That sounds like a perfect time for me to go ahead and do that. Now, look, me being a huge HP Lovecraft fan and really getting into some of the horror stuff that Clive Barker has done, a lot of people said, you are going to love Berserk. And from what I've seen in these first, uh, this first uh, two and a half volumes here, guys, uh, yeah, yeah, there's some straight uh, straight out of Hellraiser 
kind of stuff. A lot of uh, Cenobites, uh, a lot of the body horror, a lot of the, you know, just the monster stuff kind of like growing out of a human body kind of stuff i, I can't really explain you have to kind of to see it to, to know what i'm talking about here but um yeah I, i'm still very into early into but like i said yeah i see the the uh the barker influence i'm at the part where you just meet griffith for the first time and the people that are with him are very much like uh like pinhead and his buddies in hellraiser i can definitely see that influence i don't know if it actually is an influence for mr miura but it's hard not to see it uh, but uh yeah or, for all i know it could be the other way around i don't know guys i don't know these things i'm not a big clive barker fan to know these facts if he's a fan of miura or miura's a fan of his or both you know most likely it's both try this came out in 89 when did hellraiser came out i think it actually came out first so uh, again i don't even know if these are actually influenced or if they're just just me looking for these things but uh, uh if i'm gonna finally start reading manga guys why wouldn't i start with the best this is routinely called the best manga out there so why would i not start with this one one that i already have an interest in based off of a video game for god's sakes and uh just like i said a kick-ass character i mean that tell me that doesn't look like a super badass i mean i'm all about that and again yes grimdark is my brand i'm all about this folks have pushed death notes they push vinland saga they've pushed uh what monster um uh, Tons of other stuff. Uh, stuff that I... I'm not reading One Piece, guys. Let that go. Uh, I, I will probably read Vinland because I love Vikings. I love The Last Kingdom, obviously. And people say you, how much I love those. You probably like that. And a friend of mine has been pushing me to read Monster and Death Note since I've known him. So I'll probably give that a chance. Here's the thing. I notice that once you say you're going to read some manga, all of a sudden everyone thinks that means it's open the floodgates time. I'm going to throw every recommendation at you that I have. Nah. Uh, I will commit to uh, doing a couple of other ones, but uh, for right now, easy, guys. I'd like to finish this first, but um, in the end, look, I'm all about a guy with a giant sword just hacking people in half, you know? <laughs> but it, it, it's really, so far, it, it kind of seems like there's more to it than just that. I don't know. I'm still really, really fresh in the series, guys. I'm still in this Black Swordsman arc, which everybody says is not a good representation of the series. So I'm not here really to give you a review or anything yet. Uh, what I will say is I noticed that like just through the first three volumes, it seems like uh, Mr. Miura's art has gotten better every every other, you know, I, I want to say issue. Like, look, Do they call them issues in manga? I don't even know. Or chapters maybe? And it's like, look, at the beginning, it's not bad art at all. It's amazing. It's amazing. But it, it's like even just going through this, it gets better and better and better. So um, from what I've seen in some of the later stuff, it just looks like it gets even more amazing. And I like the how he does like the ink ones and then he does like the charcoal drawings which are just magnificent so um yeah yeah i think that uh this is just as advertised i'm pretty sure i'm going to end up loving this i really like how it has started um i, I have some a lot of questions uh like uh, br uh guts does seem very uh intense <laughs> Uh, but uh, I'm sure there's a backstory there. I, I mean, I've, all I've heard about guys is this Golden Age arc that's supposed to be one of the greatest things, not only in manga, but in all of fantasy storytelling. It's supposed to be one of the greatest backstories ever. So uh, I think it goes like 10 volumes of just that arc. So uh, I'm excited. I'm ready to get into it. But um, yeah, I, that's really it, guys. It's really the legacy that it's kind of built up, my interest in it already, and just being ready to get away from what American comics has become right now. Uh, that, guys, is why I have decided to read Berserk. Now, let's talk about how I plan to cover this on the channel. That one's still very much up in the air, and it is up to you guys. Look, I've talked about comics on this channel one time, and it is one of my least viewed videos ever. Now, yes, I know I was talking about American comics, and I know that those are not as popular right now. Uh, at least I don't think so. I, I don't. I don't hear anybody talking about. It. They talk about the comic book movies. They don't talk about the comics right now. But um, I'm not going to do this if you know 50 people are going to watch it. It's that kind of thing. This isn't the kind of stuff I usually cover on the channel. I can get away with calling this fantasy, I believe, and be able to cover it like that. But I do know there are still a lot of people out there like me that were like, I don't know, manga, I don't know, thing I'm really, really, really interested in. And there are a lot of people who have those preconceived notions of what they are. I was there until about a couple of days ago when I started reading this, okay? So I, I get that. I will cover this on the channel if people want me to. The idea that I have right now 
is to cover it by arc. I think the arcs are what the Black Swordsman, Golden Age, Conviction, Falcon, Millennium Falcon, Millennium Falcon, like the Millennium Falcon, and I think Fantasia. I think are the the five arcs. I was thinking about covering it by arc as like a book review, but again, that's up to you guys. This video does well. I'll at least do the first one, and I'll probably do Golden Age just because of how popular it is. If people want me to keep going. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. I don't know. Again, that's just going to kind of depend on you guys. You know, I love to give the people what they want, but I'm also going to listen to what the people don't want. And if they, people do not want this, then I won't do it. You know, I'm just doing this because I said that I would. And uh, I'm actually really excited about it. I really am. This is not anything I'm going into like, oh, my arms crossed. Like, oh, my camp. I'm just going to do this just because you guys want me to. I, I Look, I say I give the people what they want, but if I have no interest in doing it, I'm not going to do it. You know, I did have an interest in this. And thank you, Patrick, for giving me the kick in the pants I needed and sending me this book. Uh, but um, if you guys want me to do more, I want you to uh, to drop in the comments and let me know that you want me to do more. It's really up to you guys. Uh, in the end, I think personally from an outside looking in kind of thing, I think it'd be really entertaining to watch someone who has never read manga experience it for the first time. I think that could be really, really fun. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I don't I don't see myself being ever being a, a live reaction reader guy. I've done it one time with the Dresden Files book because people, so many people requested it. So I'm not saying that I would do that. But if you guys want to hear me talk about these things and hear me eat crow <laughs> about certain things, I am always more than willing to do that just based off of some of the quotes that I've read from the series. I'm very excited to continue on. It seems like it's going to be a true coming-of-age fantasy story. And guys, that is my bread and butter. Give me some coming-of-age. Give me some cutting some people in half. Give me some big, creepy monsters. And guys, I am all in. And that sounds like what this series is. So guys, have you read Berserk? What do you think? I want you to drop in the comments in a non-spoilery way and tell me, one, why you think I should be reading this, and two, are you excited that I'm finally doing it? Because you guys have not shut up about the series for two years. So it's on you guys. You win, okay? But I am having a great time so far, and I look forward to uh, continuing. So drop in the comments, guys, and I will talk to you there.